Hi, it's Kyle from Bytewing Games, and today we're learning how to play Reiner Knizia's Through the Desert, the newest version from All Play. And this is a prototype, so your version may look just slightly different than mine. In Through the Desert, you are building out your caravan in the Sahara Desert, making your way to watering holes and oases. I think that's the plural for oasis. The point of the game is to win, and you win by having the most points. You'll earn points as you visit watering holes, earning the tokens and scoring those points. You'll also earn points for touching an oasis with your caravan. And at the end of the game, the largest caravan in each color will earn points. The base game plays the same as older versions of Through the Desert. So if you already know how to play the game, feel free to skip to the end where I go over the new expansion material. Let's take a look at the setup. The board is double-sided, one side, the day side, doesn't have a river, and the night side does have a river. The river introduces just one simple rule, so for your first game, pick either side to play with. We'll set up the standard board. In a two or three player game, you won't use the shaded portion of the board. With four or five players, you'll use the entire board. Place the point tokens, largest caravan tokens, and camels next to the board. In a two-player game, remove eight of each color of camel, and in a three-player game, remove four of each color. Randomly choose five oasis hexes, and place a tree on those spaces. Mix up the waterhole tokens, and place a token on each marked waterhole space, as well as any oasis hex that didn't get a tree. Each player selects a color, taking that color token and their five leaders. In a five-player game, each player will remove one leader from the game, making sure that each player selects a different colored leader to remove. The youngest player is the first player. That player will place one leader of any color on the board. The next person clockwise will pick a different colored leader to place on the board. Once all players have placed their first leader, all in different colors, turns will continue going around clockwise placing leaders, but at this point you can place any color leader you want. Your leaders can be placed on an open hex, but they cannot be placed on top of a watering hole, and they can't be placed next to an oasis or next to another leader. Now that all the leaders have been placed, you're going to extend these caravans. On your turn, select two camels and place them next to matching colored camels on the board. And that's your entire turn. The player to your left will do the same and turns will continue clockwise around and around until the game ends. To begin the game, the first two players will only place one camel on the board. Except for in a two-player game, only the first player places one, and then the second places two. But after this first turn or two, every turn players have to play two camels onto the board. When placing camels, there are a few rules. Camels can only be placed on an empty hex, including on top of water holes. They cannot be placed on the same hex as another camel, or the same hex as a tree. You are extending your caravans, so any camel you play does have to be next to your existing leader or caravan, and it has to match the color of that camel. So on your turn, you could select an orange camel and a purple camel, placing the orange camel next to your existing orange camels, and your purple next to your purple. And you can select two of the same colored camel. And the camels don't have to be in a straight line, they can branch however you'd like. So on your turn, you could place two purple camels here and here. Caravans are allowed to touch each other, as long as they are different colors. So you could not place a purple camel here, because that would be touching my purple caravan. If you place a camel on top of a water hole, take the token, placing it face down in front of you. You'll total all those points at the end of the game, but you want to keep it secret, keep it safe. If you place a camel next to an oasis, you'll earn 5 points, but each caravan can only score each oasis once. So touching that oasis again with the same caravan won't score you five more points. But multiple caravans can score for the same oasis. Another way to score points is to enclose areas. If a single caravan encloses an empty region, no other caravan will be able to access it. That means you score points for any enclosed water holes or oases. And that enclosed region can include the edge of the board, the mountains, or the villages. So, if you enclosed this space, you would earn the two tokens and score five points for the oasis. You will also score one point per empty hex inside this region at the end of the game. So, in this example, you would earn ten points at the end of the game for empty spaces. The oasis doesn't count as an empty space. A few clarifications. 
To enclose a region, it does have to be one caravan that encloses an entire region. You can't have two separate caravans closing off a region. And once a region is enclosed, no players, including you, are allowed to add more camels inside of that enclosed area. The game will continue until one color of camel is completely gone. At that point, the player will finish the turn, and the game ends. So, you place this purple camel, which will end the game. You place a second camel to finish your turn, and the game is over. Count up the largest caravan in each color, giving that player the largest caravan token. In case of a tie for largest caravan, each tied player takes a 5 point token. Total up your tokens, and count 1 point for any open hex in enclosed regions, and the player with the most points wins. If you're playing on the river side of the board, you'll earn 5 points when a caravan crosses the river for the first time. Each caravan can score just one time for crossing the river. Let's jump into the new material. The Crocodile expansion comes with the Crocodile Meeple and an Asleep Awake token. After setup, but before placing leaders, randomly choose an oasis to place the Crocodile next to. Give the player to the right of the start player the Crocodile token. After that player's turn, they will move the Crocodile to an open hex adjacent to a different oasis. Pass the crocodile token counterclockwise. At the end of that player's turn, when they have the token, they will again move the crocodile and pass the token counterclockwise, and that will continue throughout the game. No players may place a camel or leader on or adjacent to the crocodile. In a two-player game, you'll use both sides of the token. You'll start the game with the asleep side facing up. After your turn, if you have the token, flip it to the awake side. When you end your turn and it shows the awake side, the crocodile is awake, so you'll move him like regular to another oasis, then flip the token and pass it to the other player. After their turn, they will flip the token from the asleep side to the awake side, and then at the end of their next turn, they will again move the crocodile, passing the token to you on the asleep side, and it will continue like that throughout the game. If there's ever no oasis spots left to place the crocodile, you'll just remove him from the board. All right, the Rival Nomad expansion. This adds new objectives. Select any two of the Rival Nomad cards. These are new objectives all players are competing for. Like the Camel Majority tokens, these objectives are each worth 10 points. And if any players tie, each tied player collects a five point token. Next is the Salt Mine expansion. This includes a set of salt scoring chips. Create three stacks, five, 10, and 15, placing them on the indicated spaces. Leaders cannot be placed on or adjacent to the salt mines, and camels cannot be placed on them. If your caravan connects a salt mine to a city, you'll collect the top token. Each caravan can score just once for each salt mine connected to each city. So a caravan could connect one salt mine to two cities, taking two tokens from that salt mine. A caravan could also connect a city to two separate salt mines, collecting a token from each salt mine. If you enclose a salt mine or a city, you've effectively connected to it. So this enclosed salt mine that connects to this city will award you the top token. Players will keep their collected tokens face down in front of them. And if a salt mine ever runs empty, you take all three of the tiles, that space just counts as an empty hex now and can be treated like usual. In a two or three player game, you will not be using the shaded regions, meaning the outside towns can't be accessed. The final expansion adds new waterhole tokens that will be mixed in with the other waterhole tokens. Remove 7-1 value, 7-2 value, and 7-3 value tokens, returning these 21 tokens back to the box. Shuffle in the new tokens and set up the game like usual. You'll claim these tokens just like regular by placing a camel on them, but when you take these special tokens, keep them face up in front of you. The new tokens are either goods or camels. A set of two good tokens is worth 10 points at the end of the game, but a single good token is worth nothing. The camel tokens will allow you to place an additional camel on your turn. You will return the token to the box and place an extra camel. You can use that camel token as soon as you earn it, or you can save it for a future turn. But you can never use more than one camel token on your turn, so a maximum of three camels can be placed on your turn. And now you know how to play through the desert, including all of the new material. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Until next time.